Hey YouTube, Matt the Lore Master here. Today I want to go over the proficiency system from 2nd Ed D&D. So, what is a proficiency system? It is generally both the telling what your character knows skill-wise, what kind of stuff he can do outside of combat, and also tells us what weapons he can use. Each class gets a set number of non-weapon and weapon proficiencies to start off with, with the non-weapon proficiencies being adjusted also based on the character's intelligence, and both of these increase as the character levels. For weapon proficiencies, each class may ch choose to be proficient in any weapon they are allowed to use. That was covered previously in my class video, so I want to click back over to there if you don't know which class can have what. Or look it up in the book, which I'll have in the link. Warriors starting off with four proficiency slots for weapon proficiencies may choose to be able to use four different weapons, or he may choose to specialize in one weapon and have three others that he knows how to use as well. When a warrior specializes, he gains a plus one to hit and a plus two to damage. He also gains an additional 0.5 to his attack rate, and that's with melee weapons. With missile weapons, it costs two slots to specialize. That's in addition to the one slot it costs to just be proficient with the weapon, and gives you a point-blank range ability. This, and it also increases how quickly you fire. Other classes cannot specialize and thus just divide up their weapon proficiencies among different weapons they'd like to use. Typical advice on this would be to pick a piercing, a slashing, and a bludgeoning weapon, which we'll cover in more depth when we get to the equipment section next. <clears throat> Non-weapon proficiencies are your character's skills that do not relate to combat, typically. The non-weapon proficiencies are broken down into five separate groups. A general group from which all classes can select, a priest group from which uh, paladins, clerics, and bards can select, a rogue group from which bards, thieves, yep, that's it. Just bards and thieves can select a warrior group from which fighters, paladins, rangers, and bards can select, and a wizard group from which the mages, specialists, and bards can select. This is another boon of being a bard, is that you have all the available options for non-weapon proficiencies. A non-weapon proficiency covers a very broad category of the general skill. First on the list in general is agriculture, which covers your ability to plant crops, harvest crops, water crops, you know, the general planting cycle. And also gives the ability to know how to farm animals. Very broad group. Um, some of them are very more specific, like fire building, which allows you to build fires out in the wilderness with things other than just flint and steel. Though you have to roll on that. Some of these skills require you to roll on them when using them. Others just come as a you know how to do it, so you do it. This also covers knowledges that a class may have. Priests can have ancient knowledge of ancient history, astrology, knowing ancient languages, and literacy. It's your nice, broad, anything your character wants to be able to know how to do, you can probably borrow with a proficiency slot. This book kind of is lacking in some categories, so definitely talk to your DM if you want to do something that's not on the list. You can write it down and you'll have that up 
capability. It's not a straitjacket system, it's just a very good starting point. Also covered in the proficiency system is the secondary skills, and these are not in designed to be used with the proficiency, the non-weapon proficiency system, but are supposed to be supplementary as a way to randomly roll a character's trade before he struck out as an adventurer. These cover general employments like armorer, boyer, making bows, boyer fletcher, farmer, fisherman, forest, der, gamer, a groomer, hunter, jeweler, so on and so forth. Skills that you find in a general town. Each of the non-weapon proficiencies in this book get a nice section devoted to them which you can't see because of my lighting problem. That's okay. And it describes what each of the skills is capable of doing and what special abilities it may grant you. Most notably in this book is the blind fighting skill, which is a combat non-weapon proficiency, of which there are only a few in the system. This ability allows you to only take a minus two penalty to attack instead of the minus four you'd take when in darkness, complete darkness, and only a minus one on a starlit night. It also avoids suffering any kind of AC penalty in combat in any kind of darkness. So yeah, shorter video this time, but I think that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and look them up. In the description below I got the link so you can look at your options. Very interesting system. Hope you get a lot of fun out of it when we, you start playing. I will talk to you later. Bye.